Welcome, you're watching the Mutual Fund Show on NDTV Profit. I'm Tamanna Anamdar, and of course, this is the show where we help you decide and plan your mutual fund investments. Every day, we speak to the top experts in that field and talk about what you should do with your investments. Today, we're talking about systematic transfer plans or STPs. Now, we keep talking about SIPs, but STPs can also be a very valuable tool when you want to deploy money. And the reason we want to talk about it in this period is uh, because this is possibly a time when you should be looking at STPs. We're uh, going and moving towards the end of the financial year. Those of you who are salaried employees uh, may have a lot of uh, money coming in in terms of reimbursements for the full year. There could be bonuses in play, uh, a lot of accounting to be done before you close for the financial year. If that leaves you with some amount of investable surplus, a lump sum, for example, is STP the best way to do it? That's what we're going to talk about today, among other things. And of course, we'll be taking your questions through the show as well. Now, to speak on this, I'm joined today by Arnav Pandya, who's founder of Money Edu School, and Ruchi Sanghe, investment advisor at Infinity Advisors. Uh, Ruchi, in fact, with us in the studio. So great to have you here at the NDTV Profit Studios. Thank you so much. On the show, Ruchi. So let me um, start. Uh, exactly on this point and let's start from the basics the ABCs what is an STP and how is it different from an SIP yeah um, an SIP is obviously when you put in uh, you know money from your bank account to investments on a regular basis and that on a systematic basis it basically draws down the money from your bank account and takes it for investments An STP which is a systematic transfer plan effectively you put money into a liquid fund and from there you switch in on a regular basis to mutual funds uh, to equity or debt mutual funds as you like so that's a transfer that happens within the same fund house from one plan to another and mostly it's a liquid fund going in money from there into a equity or a debt mutual fund uh, for a longer term investment basis okay so why is an stp um, a good option to use and when so uh, frankly i'm a very big proponent of stps uh, for several reasons. One, obviously, you know, you want to look at rupee cost averaging. So there mm. are peaks and troughs in the market. When you invest in a systematic manner over a period of time, then you get some money in the, through the peak, some through the trough, but you average out your cost of entry. It's also less uh, risky from the standpoint that, you know, the volatilities that you face in the market, you basically say that uh, you, over a period of time, you're going to average out your entry, so the volatility is also lower. So it minimizes the risk to a certain extent. The other thing that happens is over a period of time, while you've been making these investments, you've put the money into liquid. So liquid also generates some return, and mm. it's more than what it would be if you're just keeping the money lying in a bank. So you also earn incremental returns through the liquid fund uh, plans that you've invested in. And frankly, it's a very good way of doing an objective, structured, disciplined way of investing because it takes out the emotion. You know, if you've got an STP um, and the market is at a high, you may be a little bit nervous to invest and you may say, hey, I don't want to invest at this point of time. But if it's an STP that's already been fixed, then you end up investing even at that point of time. So it removes the emotion and makes it more neutral, the investments. And of course, for those who are a little bit greedy in STP, if you've got uh, money in lying in liquid, you can actually switch it into the equity markets much faster as well. So um, for all of those reasons, actually, not the last, I do like STP because it's structured, disciplined, and you know it makes sure that you are actually effectively deploying and maintaining the asset allocation that you've got a goal or target towards because you don't want to stray away from that. But sometimes when the market moves and you get emotional, you may want to abstain from investing, and an STP will not allow you to do that. So. So I agreed, uh, greed can sometimes be good, so <laughs> why not? Arnav also with us today. Arnav, uh, you know, just on that point of an STP versus an SIP, if I were uh, to ask you to break it down into two pros and two cons each, what would you say? And of course, you can add more than just two. I mean, initially, the first thing is that when do you use an STP as compared to an SIP? In normal circumstances, when you have a regular flow of income or money coming in, that is where you use the systematic investment plan because it matches with your cash flow. Now, assume there is a situation where you have a big amount or which is a lump sum and you still want to deploy that in equities. 
that is the time when you use the stp because you don't want that money to be invested at one go and have the risk of that single one time investment at the same time you don't want to be in a situation where you keep that money in the savings account but by the time you do the regular investment it's used up somewhere else so stp is meant for a lump sum amount which you have which you actually go and put it into a short duration debt fund it can be a liquid money market fund and then you transfer it to an equity so it does two things it helps you maintain your regularity of investment and at the same time it keeps the money out of your spending reach now coming to the pros and cons now a systematic investment plan is ideal for someone who has regular income coming in and they can do this kind of investment the other benefit of the sip is that it averages out your costs so without you having to look at it and make a call on when the market is high when the market is low those are the main benefits of the sip the uh, disadvantage of the sip is obviously that what it's not applicable or rather it doesn't solve your problem if you have this kind of lump sum amount while if you go to the uh, stp route the main benefit is that you earn debt returns over a period in which the money is lying and is being transferred to the equity account so you do not lose out on the earnings part at the same time you are able to achieve the goal of regular investing and averaging out your cost and the disadvantage of an stp again is simple that it is applicable only in a situation where you have a lump sum and you want to deploy that otherwise i mean it does not make sense because then the sip route is the easier one to adopt so it it makes sense if you have a lump sum and you know that is uh, crucial to remember so let me come to the context we set at the beginning of this conversation arnav about this being your end it is possible you have some money coming your way in that sense would an stb be superior to any other route or a lump sum a simple lump sum investment because then that's the other option i would have right to just make those lump sum investments in specific funds which i find useful why then should i look at an stp no this is precisely the reason why you should look at an stp that if you have this kind of uh, large amount coming in could be a bonus could be your annual reimbursement which you've not claimed but the company is now giving it to you so you don't want to invest in haste because what happens is that if your final goal is to have an equity exposure you run the risk of having just a one time investment time exposure if you invest it at one single go so which is why that we say that whenever you are investing you do not know today whether the market is high or low because it's all contextual and all this will be known only in hindsight so which is why regular investing into equities is the best way to ensure that you are reducing your risk at the time of investment itself and that is why if you have this lump sum you don't want to invest in haste and then repent later saying that maybe i should not waited for some time or i should have spread out the investment the stp does this automatically for you and at the same time it's not that this lump sum is lying in the savings account earning 3 3 1/2% you are putting it in a debt fund where due to the current liquidity scenario you are actually getting good returns on the short term debt funds also so that is one thing and the other part is also look at the current market scenario at this point of time one there is this constant worry in the market as to whether there is overvaluation what is going to happen second with the elections also coming up there is a bit of uncertainty in terms of how the markets will behave in the short term so which is why you if you spread out the investment say you get a lump sum you spread it out over the next 6 months all these worries are taken care of automatically without you having to uh, take any kind of tension over the next few months because with elections on the horizon it's going to get very volatile and which is where a lot of retail investors could find themselves on a what you call a sticky wicket mm so maybe not the best time for lump sums just wanted uh, your take on that uh, as well 
uh, in terms of the timing and the context right now, does an STP become a superior vehicle versus a lump sum? I completely agree, uh, you know, it does become a superior because markets are at a high. In fact, uh, you know, there have been lots of different kinds of modes that uh, SEBI has been using to figure out the stress test, for example, just to make sure that yes. what kind of liquidity is available in, uh, you know, uh, in funds. And uh, some of those actually have been a little bit, uh, have been quite surprising, the results. Um, they've taken reasonably long for uh, liquidating the investments that, uh, um, that are being held by the equity fund. So there is a lot of concern about markets being at higher levels. And I would personally also advise it makes sense to uh, you know, defer the investment over a period of time. So mm -hmm. six months, six to eight months, and it'll it take into account any of the other events that happen during this period of time, for example, elections or anything else. You know, I mean, Fed, for example, has uh, kept the uh, interest rates steady. But if the interest rates were to move, there will also be impact in the markets here, in equity markets in India. And all of those variations are actually taken, you know, will a little be balanced if you do an STP. So definitely makes sense to do STP over a six to eight month period right now, given the way the market is and the levels that the markets are at and the concerns that, you know, even the regulators are seeing at this point of time. Mm. Uh, you know, just uh, follow up uh, because you mentioned the stress test and how you found some of the results surprising. Why don't you elaborate on that? Because there has been so much commentary on, uh, first of all, this is hypothetical, right? Yes, this, this absolutely. Is, fine, it's hypothetical, but the fact is that it's a stress test for a reason. And if there's a test, you have to pass it or you fail it or, you know, you, you're, you're graded on it. Yeah. So in that sense, what was your takeaway with what you saw, which with some players taking much longer than the others. Obviously, we have to adjust for AUMs, etc. Yes, absolutely. I mean, you know, but even some of the smaller funds, because mm. one of the things that one, uh, you know, is that if the sp uh, fund is smaller size, it's agile and it's able to liquidate faster is the impression that investors have. But that's not necessarily the case. Some of the smaller sized AUM funds are also have come out in the stress test doing very poorly and uh, some of the larger ones are quite uh, in you know sort of competitive in terms of the number of days to liquidate 50 percent of the portfolio for a large fund like a nippon uh, india small cap fund is very similar maybe just five days longer than a quant small cap fund which is smaller in aum a tata small cap fund which is actually quite small in terms of aum has take it has shown the poorest uh, liquidity you know so um, there are there are differences and you rightly said it's hypothetical but it is is a good indicator to have saying that today if there is a run on the market and run on these funds what kind of how long will it take for the investors to, to get money in their hands and if someone is looking uh, to uh, you know sort of liquidate or they want they're looking at fund mutual funds as an investment vehicle for quick liquidity one should be aware that these may not be so quickly liquidatable right make a decision on investments or would you advise people to make a decision on investments based on these stress test results not really because uh, I what I will advise clients is that you know for, for example when you're looking at investing in small and mid cap the horizon for investment should be longer mm. today the markets have uh, witnessed very high levels and uh, over the last one year, there are most of the small cap and the mid cap segment has seen north of 60% kind of returns only on a one year basis, right? So it is time to slow down, to be a little bit cautious. But if you are investing in the segment, don't do it for, you know, for a quick liquidity in, uh, with quick liquidity in mind. Look at it for a three to five year horizon at least. So while I would be cognizant of the liquidity test, I wouldn't use that as a, you know, as a, as a principle for investing in the these segments because really the investments in small cap and mid cap are supposed to be for a longer tenor. Yeah. Quick word from Arnav since we've, uh, you know, sort of segued uh, into a very different and slightly, you know, it's a very current top of mind topic. Arnav just wanted to know and was curious to know what was your takeaway from these stress tests? So my takeaway one is that investors should not rely just on this factor for making or either an investment decision or a decision on whether to sell their fund. Second is According to me, over the next few months, I think we will have to see a change in the methodology of the test, stress test because a couple of things are not being included here. For example, it doesn't take into consideration the cash which is maintained by a particular fund because cash is liquid anyways, but that is not there in this calculation. The other part is that neither is the derivative holding of a fund. 
So if you include these two things along with the ability to liquidate the part of the portfolio, then I think the picture is more comprehensive. And I believe that uh, over a period, this was the first time that the results were announced, but I think going forward, you will see some change in this methodology because that will give you a bit better picture. But I would say that along with all this, look at the other factors involved, which is which the stress test has also given out, which is that what is the concentration of the top investors into the scheme? Because that tells you that how many big investors or rather what is the weight that these big investors have if it comes to say liquidation of the portfolio. The other part is also look at the kind of portfolio turnover which the scheme is doing which will tell you how fast they are churning the portfolio the beta of that particular scheme which tells you that if there is a one percent movement in the market what is the kind of movement that the fund is seeing so all these things taken together will give you a better picture and then you can frame a decision as to whether this fund is actually suitable for your risk taking ability that is the main point look at your risk taking ability even though small caps are riskier than the large and mid caps, but even within that, you have to see whether a particular style of management and whether the risk element is still not far more. Because when you are already making a riskier investment, you might want to play it slightly safe in terms of reducing that risk a bit by looking at these factors. So we've spoken about STPs. Uh, we also spoke about the hot topic this moment uh, in mutual funds, which is the stress test. But after the break, we're going to speak about you. That is your queries, your questions with our experts for the day. So stay tuned for that and more. All right, this is the part of the mutual fund show where we take your queries. And our first question is from Divya, aged uh, 38. Her goal is financial planning, and she's an NRI living in the UK. Says she wants to start an SIP and invest in the stock markets. I'm looking to invest 50 to 80,000 rupees a month for the next 10 years, as I am planning to move back to India in the next 10 to 15 years. Can you please suggest some funds and give me at least 10 to 15 percent returns with adjusted inflation after 15 years i'll let uh, uh, arnav start with this answer and you know interesting that she's in the uk for at least the next 10 years but wants to invest in india first up is that a good idea and then where does she put the money it's always a good idea to put money in india specifically at this time or juncture because of the kind of developments as well as the growth that you're seeing in the economy and that will be reflected in the overall uh, corporate performance and the stock market over a period of time. So uh, the next few years are a good time to have an exposure to India. Being an NRI, it is possible for her to take an exposure in the country also. It's not difficult. And the mutual fund route is the best route to do it because you, you might not be aware of uh, the intricacies of the market and dealing with uh, equities directly. So the mutual fund becomes a uh, best route for you to actually take this kind of exposure. The problem here is not with the exposure, neither with the time horizon, because the investment is going to be made over uh, 10 years and the money might be required after 15 years. So the time horizon is pretty long. That solves the problem of where you are going to take an exposure, which is equities which is also in tune with what her requirements are. But the problem here is in terms of setting of the goal and the expectations. See, what we have seen over the past two, three, four years uh, is something which is not likely to be sustained at this level. So when you are looking forward, you are looking at it. Mm, we seem to have lost that feed with uh, Arnav. We'll try and get him back, but important point he's making because the expectations there is, uh, you know, 10 to 15 percent uh, returns with adjusted inflation after 15 years. Is that feasible, Ruchi? So, no, I think what she I, I was, I was is 10 to 15 crores after 15 years, that's pretty sizable. And I think what Arna was saying, which I completely agree with, he, she has to moderate the expectations. Yeah. Of course, uh, 12 to 15 percent is what one could expect. 
or uh, you know or one should this is 12 percent is an average uh, over the last 10 years if you look at what the market performance has been it's around 12 percent on an annual basis so with that between three to four crores is what she could expect at the end of 15 years uh, however it would be a more high risk high return kind of a portfolio so if she is looking at mutual fund route which is obviously the right way to look at it a multi-cap um, mid cap uh, flexi cap funds would be the right ways to um, take um, you know sort of an exposure into the Indian markets because it gives a uh, asset allocation um, between mid small and large uh, which is in a way sort of determined by the AMC and also gives a higher return uh, because of exposure in this you know the, the mid and the small cap um, uh, markets so mm. I would suggest that 50,000 to 80,000 would not, you couldn't do too many of the funds, but yeah, these are the kind of funds that I would look at. Yeah. Okay, let's quickly get to uh, Swapnil's uh, question. He's age 30, goal is retirement fund. You know, more and more on this show, we get uh, uh, questions from people in their 30s already looking at a retirement fund. It's such a great trend, so kudos to that. He says, I currently hold 15 lakh rupees in mutual funds, would like to create a retirement corpus of five crore rupees, along with some extra funds for my child's education. Swapnil, really, I, I love the forward-looking thought. Need some guidance in terms of my current investments, and he's listed it out. We'll play it on screen so we don't waste too much time, but um, uh, you know, the SBI Nifty Index Fund, the Motilal Oswal Nifty 200 Momentum, is there the Axis Blue Chip, Kotak Emerging Equity Fund, et cetera, are among them. So his question is, what do you do next? What would you say, Ruchi? Uh, yeah, there's a long list of funds <laughs> that I can see. Um, I would say that a uh, couple of things. I think the ELSS schemes, uh, one should review uh, with the current changes in tax and where you can just take a standard deduction, whether they um, still make sense is um, something that, you know, one should look at the portfolio and uh, really compare it with the flexi cap uh, schemes because they're effectively a flexi cap scheme. Um, so uh, those are something he may want to re review. I cannot get a sense on what is the allocation uh, that he has um, currently, you know, and what his risk profile is. So it'll be hard to say uh, how, where, how the portfolio is constructed. Overall, it seems like a good quality uh, of fund portfolio. Um, however, um, I think that some of the funds that are there, like the Momentum uh, 200, which is uh, you know the Mutilal Oswal Momentum 200 fund, they've done very well over the last uh, couple of years. Whether they continue to perform, uh, there is a long history of these funds in, in India. Um, so one should be more actively sort of monitoring that, uh, those, those smart beta funds. Other than that, the portfolio looks good and um, really the construct or the allocation will depend on his risk profile and the, when he needs the money for the education. Um, that information is not available, so it's very difficult to give a standard kind of answer. Uh, but definitely the quality seems uh, uh, good of the portfolio. Okay, so the quality seems good of the portfolio. We're out of time, but you know where to send your questions to us. The numbers on the screen for today are Nav and Ruchi. Thank you so much for joining us. This is all the time we have on the Mutual Fund Show today. Uh, but stay tuned, a lot more coming up after the break on NDTV Profit.